Nobody's probably ever heard of by a dude named Haywood Banks who did uh, whatever the count to 18 is. Because there is, in fact, 18 wheels on a big rig. Right, you are. We're going to roll right into your Budweiser heat race number two for your IMCA Sport Mod on the pole out of Lincoln, Nebraska. It's the 6SJ of Sean Pospisil. To his outside out of Beatrice, Nebraska, it's the 5H of Sean Hine. Starting on the inside of row two, it's the W2 of Cash Winsky out of Byron, Nebraska. And to his outside, another Beatrice runner in the 23. That's Steve Swarthout. Lighting up on the inside of row number three, it's the driver out of Fairbury, Nebraska. It's the seven of Lee Horky to his outside. A former micro driver. I think he still does a little bit of this, but he's out of Columbus, Nebraska. That's the one of Riley Ositowski. And starting shotgun on the field inside row number four, it's going to be the 22B of Tyler Snyder from down the road in Diller. Well, Aaron, we might get a good call on this one. We know all the cars. We got their names down. Let's get to calling some races, brother. Right you are. Caution lights are out on the speedway. They're going to lead them down the back stretch, and that's Pospisil and Hein. Rolling slowly through turn number three. Steve Porter on the flag stand's got the green flag in hand. We're going to let this one loose. Good start there. The field. Good start there for that 6J. Is this one going to hold as uh, Hine did not go, but we've got one going around over there. That is the one of Riley Ostentowski, I believe. Maybe not. Looking for a number here. No, that is the W2 of Cash Winsky. That sharp looking car of him. He also. I covered him when he was driving micros, a young man out of Byron, Nebraska. So he's going to bring out the first caution of heat race number two for your IMCA Sport Mods. James, we didn't get a lap complete, so what's that mean? He's on, he got a little bit of a late start. He had to get this. Dan Taylor had to go to work today. So I, I guess we try it one time. I don't know how involved the actual speedway is going to get, but the actual speedway is going to get him up, get him up, get him up. Let's take a drink. Coffee might be the choice of beverage today, maybe with a little Bailey's. I'm not sure. So re rack, re stack. We're going to try this one again. Heat race number two. Winsky's got a run on Pospisil down here, down the back stretch they go off of turn number two. Pospisil with a good run there on the higher line, and he's going to close the door down in turns three and four. So great battle there for second is Horky in that number seven right there in fourth. He's going to look to the inside down here in turns one, unable to get the run that he needed. Horky picking up a big win here a couple weeks ago down at Red Dirt Raceway in Meeker, Oklahoma. So. Uh, Shout out to him and that new car that he's got this year. It's obviously working, but sets in fourth right now. He's got a little work. Meanwhile, Steve Swarthout that 23 is checked out on the field. All American safety lights as Steve Swarth out rolls smooth into turn number one over Pospisil in second, Porky in third, and Ozentowski rounding out the top four. Ozentowski closing into about a car length and a half off the back bumper of the seven of Horky. As this time by Alpha Four, here comes Steve Swarth out. 
Rock and chair flags in hand from new flagman Steve Porter. Down there working the sticks. Next time by, gonna be white flag out. One lap to go for Steve Swarth out. This time by off turn four. So Swarth out look just to go over one more time around the Beatrice Speedway. Looking to have a comfortable win here in heat race number two. Horky in third, Pospisil in second. That's the one of Ossetowski in fourth and rounding out your top five. Well, we're missing some data on some of this on my race pass. And Waiting uh, for data's here? <laughs> Man, he's a runner. So the checkered flag is out, and Steve Swarthow in the number 23 picking up the heat race win. How about it, race fans? Coming home in second, the 6SJ of Sean Pospisil. In third, the 7 of Lee Horky. And in fourth, it's going to be the 1 of Riley Osentowski. All right, heat race number three for your Budweiser IMCA Sport Mods coming at you like this. On the inside of row number one, it's going to be the 44D. That's Derek Hall. It is outside in the 05 out of Beatrice. It's David Sherwood. Lighting up on the inside of row number two out of Dorchester, Nebraska. That's the 66 of Trevor Noonan. Two is outside out of Beatrice, Nebraska. That's the 45 of Lane Malco. Starting on the inside of row number three, it's going to be the 27W of Andrew Whitmore out of Fairbury. And to his outside in the 24, it's Drake Bullmeyer from right here in Beatrice. And rounding out your field, the 18M out of Denton, Nebraska. That's Mason Richard. Green flag is out. Heat race number three for your sport mod. Coming at you, race fans. Look out. We're going to light the wick and get it done quick as Derek Hall leads the field through one and two. Battling up two and three wide right behind him down the back straightaway. Looking to solidify the second spot off turn four. Derek Hall's going to lead lap number one. Bolmeyer trying to make that low line work as he's going to steal a spot there from the 05 of Sherwood. So move Bolmeyer up into third right now as he sets his sights there now on the 66 of Noonan. New paint scheme for Trevor Noonan in the 66. Of course, Trevor Noonan, part of Noonan Industries. You see a lot of mud covers on these cars, and a lot of them come from right down the road over at Noonan Industries as he's holding down the second spot behind Derek Hall. Bullmeyer into the third spot. Top four beginning to spread away from the field. Hall with a smooth drive. Andrew Whitmore rounding out your top four. Six laps remaining in this one. Derek Hall had to take a little time off. Another one of those guys that had some medical issues last year. Back behind the wheel and not missing a beat in the 44D. Derek Hall continues to lead this one down the back straightaway. Over Trevor Noonan and Drake Bullmeyer. Drake's going to try and make a move to the inside. Not going to be enough. Noonan has the momentum run down the front straightaway. But the 24 continues to try and close in on that second place spot. Three more to go in this one. James, as you still have the race leader of Derek Hall. Right behind him is the 66 of Noonan and the 24, or 24 of Drake Bullmeyer. I tell you what, the struggles of it being the first race night back, everybody's got new paint schemes, and I can't remember last year's nickname. I know that Derek Hall has a nickname, and it's not what Tanisa calls him. White flags out, Steve Porter on the sticks this evening here at the Beatrice Speedway. 44 Dia Derek Hall leads the field down, Trevor Noon in second. Drake Bullmeyer in third, Whitmore rounding out the top four in this one. Through three, off of four for the final time for your fourth heat race in your Budweiser IMCA Sport Mod. Derek Hall is going to get the job done. Once again, your top four coming back to you in fourth was the 27W of Andrew Whitmore. Third goes to the 24 of Drake Bullmeyer. Second 
to that Trevor Noonan in the 66. I was looking at the wrong heat race and confused myself. Beatrice Speedway, give it up for your winner in the 44D. That's Derek Hall. Well, James, we've got one more here in the Budweiser IMCA Sport Mods. On the pole, the driver out of David City, Nebraska, driving the 16J. That's Justin Swoboda. Two is outside out of Beatrice, Nebraska, the 33 of Travis Runcie. Starting on the inside of row number two, it's going to be that familiar 30 machine out of Washington, Kansas. That's Taylor Metz to his outside in the 13XL. It's P.J. Conger. And row number three on the inside out of Crete, Nebraska, the 19 double X. That's Brandon Spanger to his outside out of Beatrice, Nebraska. It's the 76 of Lance Borgman. Once again, a huge thank you for everybody who came out to brave the elements here at Beatrice Speedway. Great looking crowd for all things considered. We're going to go ahead and light the wick on this next Budweiser IMCA Sport Mod Heat. Oh, race. trouble for the 33 is Runcy up against the wall down here in turns one and two. Not sure if he just got in a little hot and then couldn't get it woed up before he uh, kisses the front or the back or the outside wall, I'm sorry, also going around Borgman over here in turn number four. What is going on here in heat race number four? Looked to me like the 33 machine couldn't quite get her to turn as he entered turn number one. I'm almost wondering if it might have lost power as he hasn't continued to roll after that light impact with the wall over there in turn one. Get this situation assessed and get right back to racing action here momentarily at the Beatrice Speedway. Run you through your lineup for this heat race one more time quickly. On the inside of row number one, it's Justin Swoboda. To his outside, the 33 of Travis Runcie, if he's able to continue. Inside row number two will be the 30 of Taylor Metz. To his outside, P.J. Conger. And the final row is Brandon Spanger and Lance Borgman. Unfortunately, the Beatrice Speedway tow crew on the scene for Travis Runcie. That's going to move your outside pole sitter to the 13XL of P.J. Conger. Not for certain that I've heard his name over at the Beatrice Speedway, but we want to thank PJ for making the trip up here as we want to thank each and every one of those drivers who's decided to spend their weekend with us in the beautiful community of Beatrice. I tell you what, ever since I was a little kid, it's always been a joy to roll into town and see haulers parked outside the hotels throughout the whole stretch of town from the Victorian end to the Super 8. Right, you are. This is, uh, I believe I read something that this is the imca's longest running event 31 years that this has been going on uh i think i read something about that uh so that is awesome that you know beatrice speedway that it's been around that long you know that's almost most of my life So it's been a little bit of a couple of moons, but always great to get back here to Gage County and the Beatrice Speedway Spring Nationals. I don't know whether it's a plus or a negative, but it sounds like you're going to be stuck with me all summer, Aaron. You know, that is a great deal that we have here at the Beatrice Speedway. I'm excited for the 2024 season. We also will talk a little bit about that. We've got some big events, so hats off to Tommy Denton, the promoter here at the Beatrice Speedway. He's got some big races lined up. Um, uh, you know, some of them that we want to highlight here a little bit here. The USMTS Modified Race, that's going to be June 19th. That's uh, Support class is going to be the Sport Mods. So how about that? USMTS right here at the Beatrice Speedway. It's going to be great to see those guys back. It's been a mini a moon, but we're going to get back to racing action. We'll think about what's coming up. Coming up as the field storms into turn number one. Swoboda takes the early lead through one and two. They're going to battle back throughout them. Look at the move that Brandon Spanger's got, trying to make it from the back row to the front row, using the high side as they go into three. Three wide for that one, Aaron. Right you are. Three wide for third. Spanger going to get the run he needed off of turn number four and take over P3 now. Sets his sight there on the 30 of Mets. Borgman's going to try that low line down in turns one and two. 
Meanwhile, Swoboda still shows the way. Well, you got a battle now for third between Borgman and Spanger. Borgman down to the low side. Spanger wants to make that 19 double X work through the middle. It looks like he's going to do it off a of four and down the straightaway. This time into one. Spanger wants the low side. Borgman's going to get in there as well. Three wide battle. This track's getting high wide and handsome early in the night. Aaron and you've got a charge coming for the second spot. Spanger to the low side. Spanger to the low side off four. He's going to have to settle for third behind Metz for the time being, but we'll keep going clean and green. Looks like five to go in this one. Keep your eye on the battle for a second right now. The three-car battle between Metz, Spanger, and Borgman. Justin Swoboda continuing to lead this one down the front straightaway as laps continue to wind down. The battles continue to heat up down the front stretch between Spanger and Metz. Spanger with the advantage through one. Can he hold it off at two? He's got the spot for the time being. Metz is going to challenge back to the high side. Don't keep your eyes off that 76 of Borgman. If these two get a little froggy, he's going to jump in there and try to steal that spot away. Metz this time past the flag stand, hangs on to the second spot. One lap to go on this one as the white flag was waved. Down the back straight away and through three and four for the final time. Beatrice Speedway makes some noise for your heat race winner, Justin Swoboda. Who's going to get the second spot at the flag stand? It's the 19 double X Spanger bringing it home in the third Actually, spot. They had the white flag out early. I think we're going to get the white flag now. He did have the white flag waving out there, but we're going to get the white flag now, it looks like. Now we're getting it off of turn number four. Take it away, James. Oh, I'm just relieved that I didn't read that scoreboard wrong. Okay, white flag's out. One more to go for Swoboda. Spanger took the second spot away from Metz. He's got one more lap to try and mount the charge. Borgman's going to set his sights back to battle to finish out the top four. Through three and four, the final, I mean it this time, the final time for this heat race, it's going to be Justin Swoboda picking up the win. Brandon Spanger in the second spot, Taylor Metz third, and rounding out your top four in the 13XL, it's P.J. Conger. I'll run it back for you one more time. Fourth was the 13XL of P.J. Conger, Taylor Metz in third. Brandon Spanger brought it home in the second spot, and Beatrice Speedway makes some noise for your winner in the 16J. It's Justin Swoboda. So good battle there for your fourth and final heat race there. So we're going to roll right into your Twin Rivers Ford IMCA Sport Compact Division. I made the trip down to Fairbury last week to check out a couple of used cars over on the Twin Rivers Ford dealership. I tell you what, what a great group of people to work with, whether you're at the Ford dealership in Beatrice or here at the old home base. Twin Rivers, the hassle-free place to buy. Good credit, bad credit, no credit at all. Look no further than Twin Rivers for your next automobile. And... And they're opening up one over in Hebron. Oh, I so, did read that the yes. other day, I think on the KUTT. Caution lights are out on the pole. The 45J of Jacob Schwab out of Crete. To his outside, the 16 out of Firth, Nebraska. That's Bryn McAtee. Inside row number two is going to be Gilbert uh, Alday out of Sioux City, Iowa. To his outside in the 84C, it's Carson Black. Row number three, we've got Caution back oh. out on the speedway. Row, we'll, we'll be able to calm down here and get this line up for you guys here. Row number three on the inside out of Spencer, Iowa. It's the 8K of KT DeVeris to his outside out of Firth, Nebraska, the 27 of Chris McAtee. And starting shotgun on the field in the 77 S, it's Seth Ambrose. Big shout out to Anthony Ainsley for helping me out with that pronunciation. Inside row number two is the 7G of Gilbert Aldalpe. I probably just got that wrong again. I learned from Dan Taylor, so I learned from the best mispronouncers. Announcers make mistakes. Absolutely. Well, and I got to give him a hard time because he's not here. And I know he's not currently tuned in on flow because he's on his way here. Wheeling caution lights flashing in the corner. We're going to get this one back underway. 
as the field rolls through three and four. These heat races go in six laps for your Twin Rivers Ford Sport Compacts. Three wide to the start line, four wide into turn one. Let's see how this one shakes out, Aaron. It is never good to go four wide down here at the Beatrice Speedway. I don't care what class you're in, but they were able to handle that great bit of driving there. And look who came out on top, that 7G of Gilbert Odalpe. He's going to look to lead lap number one off of turn number four. Carson Black with a strong move on the low side in the 84C to try and get the second spot away. As Adolpe continues to lead this one, he's got some hard chargers behind him racing two wide through three and four. That 84C of Carson Black, that's another young and up and comer, very good in that sport compact. So he's got a battle on his hand here with Jacob Schwab out of that 45J. So that's the battle now for the P2 out here on the speedway. Meanwhile, the 7G of Adalpe leading the race here. But you got a battle now down the back stretches. You've got the 84C of Black looks to the inside of Adalpe. He's going to try to close the door here off of turn number four you've got a new race leader off of turn number four race fans but here comes the 7g on the outside you've got them two wide down into turns one and two great battle here heat race number one for your imca sport compacts little slip of the grip for adolpe is going to make him battle with schwab for the second and third position schwab down to the low side adolpe trying to hang on to the middle might be a little close corners racing off turn number four a little bumping and banging at the line, almost too close to call between Swab and Adalpe. As Carson Black continues to lead this one, Adalpe hangs on to the second spot. Swab's not going to give up that easy as they roll into turn three. Looking for the checker this time by Beatrice Speedway. Make some noise for your heat race winner in the 84C. It's Carson Black out of Beatrice. Adalpe brings it home in the second spot. Jacob Schwab in third. Use my race pass, it's a tool. Great run there from the 84C of Carson Black starting in that fourth position. And uh, he just you know, patiently picked him off. And uh, once he got out front, he checked out on the field. Heat race number two getting ready to roll out onto the famed 3 8 mile here at the Gage County Fairgrounds we know and love and call Beatrice Speedway. For your Twin Rivers Ford Sport Compact, starting on the inside of row number one, it's going to be Johnny Thomas in the 45 out of Beatrice to his outside and the 92 92C, another Beatrice runner in Dylan Crannell. Got a battle between father and son in row number two on the inside. It's going to be the son, the 84J of Jackson Black out of Beatrice, Nebraska. To his outside, the old man. Uh, the 84 Josh Black. You know, those two were out here last time we painted those walls with rollers. Had a great time hanging out with them. That was back before Jackson and Carson got started racing. Anyways, back to the heat race at hand. Inside row three, it's going to be the 07 of Brooke Osler from Milford, Iowa. And to her outside in the 12M, it's Brandon Carmichael out of Blue Springs. And rounding out your field, the 72J of Josh Ortiz out of Fairbury, Nebraska. Steve's got the green flag in hand. We're going to get this one down and gone. Here we go. Sport Compact Heat Race number two. And back to yellow on the wheel all American wheel and all American caution lights over in the corners here at Beatrice Speedway. Re-rack them and restack them. So re-rack and re-stack heat race number two. Thomas and Crandall to show the way. The Blacks in row number two. Osler and Carmichael and Ortiz rounding out your field. 
Heat two, take two. Green flag coming back at you here at Beatrice Speedway. Who's gonna hold the advantage as they go into one? Looks like Thomas with the advantage early on. Hornet's Nest literally and figuratively right behind him. Hard challenge down the back straightaway. This could be anyone's race in a four car pack. So Jackson Black looks to the inside of the 92C of Dylan Cranell and he's gonna take over. Now he's gonna get the lead from Thomas off of turn number four. You've got a new race leader. It's gonna be Jackson Black of that 84J. Good battle there for second. And the old man in the 84, Josh Black, looking to throw his hat into the mix for P2. Thomas trying to shape up a battle through the middle line off turn four. Black's going to continue to hold the advantage. Thomas into the second spot. He's going to try and make a momentum move through one and two. Try and carry the speed from the 45 in that one. Not going to happen this time by. Three car battle for the second spot. Look at the four cylinders of Fury battling battling it out here in heat race number two and running that high line. Look at them going up there. They're trying to make this track wide. And I tell you what, it's really working. Jackson Black down there on the low side, really making it look easy. But the 45 machine of Thomas holding a good bit of momentum all the way around the speedway in that middle line as he tries to push the cushion up towards the top as the races continue to go on in the evening. Steve Porter going to show him the sticks at the line. We got two more times around here. Your race leader, the 84J of Jackson Black, shows the way. The battle now is for P3 between Josh Black and Johnny Thomas. Dylan Cranell on that 92C sets in second. White flag out this time by. Take it away there, James. All right, will do. Jackson Black continuing to lead this one down through the final, what, through the final time through corners one and two. Jackson Black, Dylan Cranell. Now Josh Black mounts the challenge for the third spot with Johnny Thomas to his outside. Off turn four, checkered flag's gonna be flying for Jackson Black. Bringing it home in the second spot will be Dylan Cranell in the 92 machine. Johnny Thomas picks up the third spot in the 45 and rounding out your top four is the 84 of Josh Black. Once again, your fourth place runner, the 84 of Josh Black. Third, the 92C of Dylan Cranell, or excuse me, Johnny Thomas in the 45. Second, the 92C of Cranell. And your heat race winner in the 84J, it's Jackson Black. So the Black Brothers getting it done here in the first two heat races, picking up the win. Night one here at the Beatrice Spring Nationals. Heat race number three coming at you. Looks to start like this out of Salina, Kansas on the pole, the 55K of Kevin Tremblay to the outside out of Beatrice, Nebraska, the 9K of Caden Murray. On the inside of row number two in the 68 plus one, it's the Blaniac, Blaine Peterson from Essex, Iowa. To his outside, it's the 77 of Branston Amder Jr. And in row number three on the inside out of Beatrice, Nebraska, the 32X of Nathan Wallstrom and that mystery car that did not have duct tape numbers. He is a familiar name around here. He's out of Beatrice, Nebraska, the 24R of Dylan Richards. So running in the sport compact division. Does uh, does your lineup have a final starter listed? I believe the 8A, unfortunately, the handwriting is a bit of a question for me, but uh, that's either Anthony Clack, Whack, something with an A-C-K at the end. Oh, I guess I could refer to my race pass. It's Clark. And Clark. Guess Anthony what? Clark, how did I not know that? Samsonite. And Clark already up to second, but you got Dylan Richards going to lead lap number one. So good battle here on the speedway. He so, came out in hot laps and didn't have any numbers on there, and now we know who the mystery driver is going to call it the mystery machine and he's going to lead this lap as well the 24r of dylan richards pulling double duty tonight in the compact and the hobby stock caden murray hanging on to the second spot for the time being anthony clark in third and the battle rages on they're on back oh we got cars going together over in turn number three and one up against the wall as the 77 of Branson and 
Amder. Brandon and Amder getting together with, I believe that was the 55K, possibly. Looks like you may have a flat left front. Then again, I'm not exactly known for my vision, but we've got the Beatrice Speedway officials down there trying to give them an assist there towards the bottom side of turn four. Yeah, the 55K of Tremblay. They come together at going into turn number three. and uh, I promise I'm not trying to just give you all of the hard names. I promise. It might be the way it's working out, but I'm not trying to do it. Unfortunately, the hook is going to come out here for the 77 of Andre Jr. Oh, I didn't even notice my dream tow rig down there. Are you talking about the big red bus? I am talking about the big red bus with an open trailer. I wouldn't need no more than that. I'd race the world of outlaws with a rig like that. I don't mean to be telling tales out of school, but I think I just heard the joke of the day come over the radio system. Somebody said, wow, now that the wind knocked down, it's kind of hot. Current race leader in this one, the 24R of Dylan Richard in second, the 9K of Kate Murray. Running in third, it's gonna be the 8A of Anthony Clark and fourth, the 32X of Nathan Wallstrom. Kevin Tremblay in the 55K in your fifth spot. The 77 of uh, Brandon Arnder Jr. And the field rounded out by the 68 plus one of Blaine Peterson. Blaine Peterson, it's nice to see that name again. I've seen him kind of run in a couple of different classes. I believe he had a sprint car for a little bit, did the sport mod stuff. I think he's just trying to cover all of the IMCA bases kind of doing the Dylan Richards thing. Dylan Richards ran a lot of different types of cars, but still continues to love these Twin Rivers Ford Sport Compacts, and how can you blame them? If I was going to buy something new just to have around, because obviously when you're doing the announcing thing a couple of nights a week, you don't have a ton of time to get behind the wheel yourself. Even Caden Murray will tell you that standing behind the flag stand, so it'd be exactly. kind of nice to have one of these just in the yard for when you get the itch. Well, we've got three more to decide this one. Well, like I said, Dylan Richards, your race leader. Thank you very much to our Beatrice Speedway tow crew for the quick work on that one. Green lights go blinky blinky in the corners. Wheeling All-American says that's going to bring back the green flag. They're going to light the wick. We're going to get this one done quick. Dylan Richards leads the field back to the flag stand, and we are back to racing action with a three-car dash for the second spot. Anthony Clark with the low side money move to get that second spot away. Pushes Caden Murray into the third spot. Murray's going to try to fight back, but the 8A machine's got a good run on the low side. Caden Murray's going to say, I want to go down there too. Murray jumps in and joins. He's now going to be challenged by that beautiful American flag 16 machine. Excuse me, not 16 machine, you blind bat. That's the 32X of Nathan Wallstrom. Thank you. Setting in fourth right now. White flag is out as the 24R of Dylan Richard. One more time around the Beatrice Speedway. Caden Murray with a strong charge through one and two. He's going to try and take the low side and get the second spot away from Anthony Clark. We'll see how that works out for him through three and four for the final time. Crossing the checkered flag, it's going to be the 24R of Dylan Richards coming to the line. Anthony Clark hangs on to the second spot. Caden Murray brings it home in third. And Wallstrom rounding out your top four in that 32X machine. Great there, great battle there for second, coming to the line. And Clark able to hold it. Hold Murray off there. So uh, once again, race fans, put your hands together for the 24R of Dylan Richards picking up the heat race win. For a second there, I thought they were uh, working out lunch plans. We're going to roll right into heat race number four. 
for your Twin River Ford IMCA Sport Compact. Cor sport Compacts, I'm sorry. Corn Spawn Packs. I get fumbled up on words all the time. I here. don't blame you a bit. It's just part of being an announcer. All right, let's get through this rundown. Starting on the inside of row number one in the 15, it's going to be Tyler Thompson out of Sioux City, Iowa. To his outside in the 25, that's Austin West from right here in Beatrice. Row number two is going to look like this on the inside out of Beatrice, Nebraska. It's the 1T of Trey Hinton. Two is outside out of Hayes, Kansas, the 69G of Gage Porter. And your final row to the inside is going to be the 77T of Toby Ambrose from Dakin, Nebraska. And starting shotgun on the field, it'll be the 12 machine, your two-time and defending sport compact track champion by Twin Rivers Ford. It's the 12 machine of Kaylee Richards out of Wymore. One more trip around. We're going to turn them loose here at the Beatrice Speedway, your final sport compact heat race. All cars moving on to the A this evening. Word from the tower. Oh, you were word from the, sorry about that. Word from the tower. We're going to stay yellow on this one, and uh, we're going to see. It looks like we might be missing somebody out there. Okay, we added one. Oh, uh, I wondered where that sixty-eight plus one was. Well, now he's here. That's Blaine Peterson. Yeah, oh, I, I see. We had Anthony Clark, I guess, technically added, but would have filled the field in the last one, and Blaine Peterson jumped into this one. All right. Take green number, flag is out. Take two for heat race number four. Back to green flag race in action. Good battle shaping up going into turn one, Aaron. Who's going to get the early lead away? Looks like Tyler Thompson is showing the race lead right now off of turn number four. He's out of Sioux City, Iowa, running in second. That's the 25 of Austin West in third. I knew she'd be up there. That's Kaylee Richards in that 12 machine. Might have a new nickname for her. We might start having to call her Quick Work Kaylee as she works quickly through the field trying to set her sights on Thompson who's holding down the lead this time by off turn four. Thompson continues to hold the advantage over Richards and West, your top three. So Kaylee Richards sets her sight there on Thompson as they go down into turns three and four. You've got a battle now for third, and that's the 69 Gia Porter. Looks to the inside of the 25 of West. West will hold the advantage down the straightaway. Your battle's shaping up for the lead between Thompson and Richards. Richards down low. Just a half a groove above her is going to be Tyler Thompson. Battle continues to rage on into three and four. No contact, just compacts. Oh, uh, right as I said that, a little bit of rubbing off turn four. Thompson continues to hold the advantage. Deekman's going to continue the battle. I got to get that right. Richards, not Deekman. Creature of habit. Right you are. Great battle as they continue down the backstretch and it turns three and four. What a battle there between Thompson and Richards. Off of turn number four, who's it going to be at the line? White flag is out. Give it to the 12 of Richards as we got one more time, and they're still side by side down here in turns one and two. Yes, sir. Tyler Thompson's not going to give up that easy, but if he wants to make a move, he's going to have to do it quickly. We are, well, there's no laps remaining, just a few corners remaining for the 12 machine of Kaylee Richards. As she makes her way underneath Steve Porter's flag stand, Kaylee Richards picks up your fourth and final Twin Rivers Ford Sport Compact Heat Race win. Tyler Thompson bringing it home in the second spot. Third will go to Austin West and rounding out your top four. It's the 69G of Gage Porter. Beatrice Speedway one more time. Make some noise for your heat race winner. The 12, it's Kaylee Richards. So husband and wife picking up heat race wins here on night one of the spring nationals. That's kind of cool. All in the family. Well, we've got some exciting heat races coming here. Not that they haven't been exciting already, but look what's up next, folks. We've got 
the premier Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC IMCA stock cars coming at you. Heat race number one looks to start like this. On the pole out of Bedford, Iowa, the 37D of Brad Derry. Two is outside out of Cozad, Nebraska, the 7A of Steve Atkin. On the inside of row number two, it's going to be the 11K of Kyle Klo out of Wallace, Nebraska to his outside. And the 84, it's the bullet, Benji Leg from Beatrice. Roll it off on the inside of row number three. It's going to be the, the driver out of Jansen, Nebraska, the 4W of Jarrett Wood. Two is outside out of Edgar, Nebraska, the 77K of Jed Williams. And rounding out the field in row number four, all by his lonesome in the 4X machine. That'll be Ethan Thompson making the trip from Glidden, Iowa. We might be selling a couple of cold ones. I'm hearing a couple of fans getting rowdy out here. What do you think of the racing action so far, Beatrice Speedway? I appreciate those who are excited. You know, you won't be quite as cold if you stretch up, jump around, and make a little bit of noise for your premier Chevrolet Buick GMC stock cars. This is going to get fun. Wheel and caution lights are out in the corners. We're going to go green once they come off turn number four. Steve Porter's got the green flag in hand. We're getting ready to turn them loose. Green flag's out. Let's go racing. Brad Deary off to the early lead in that 37D. The Iowa runner making some moves quickly. And they're shaping up there behind him. Second place runner trying to take it away. He wants to get up to Dory's or Deary's door. He's going to do so through three and off of four. Who's going to lead lap number one? Coming back to the flag stand, it's Brad Deary. So good battle for the top spot there between Deary and Atkin. As they're going to look side by side down the back stretch, they go into turn number three and off of turn number four. Who's it going to be as they work through the corners down here in three and four? Great battle here. Heat race number one off of the high side there. You have a new race leader. Give it to the 7A of Steve Atkin. Atkin's going to try and take the line away. He doesn't want another challenge from Brad Deary. Deary's into the second spot. Waiting in the wings in third is Kyle Klo. He's made some quick work out of that 11K machine trying to work his way towards the front. As this time by through four, it's going to be Atkin holding down another lap. Battle shaping up for the fourth spot, Aaron. Right you are. That's Jed Williams in that 77K looking to the outside of the 4W of Jarrett Wood as they're going to battle side by side down the backstretch and into turns three and four. So that's your battle for P4 out right now on the Speedway Heat Race number one for your stock cars. So Williams now up to third. Laps winding down on this one. They're going to get sticks at the line from head flagman Steve Porter. Two more times around the Beatrice Speedway. Steve Atkin, your race leader. And Brad Derry sitting in second. So does Williams have anything for Derry here as he's going to look to the inside off of turns three and four. Both of them running the low line. White flag is out one more time around the Beatrice Speedway. Off corner number two for the final time in this heat race. He's out for a cool Sunday drive on a Friday night, making his way through turn three and off of turn number four, getting ready to head underneath Steve Porter's Wheeling American flag stand. Give it up for your race winner, the 7A, Steve Adkin. Brad Deary brings it home in the second spot. Jed Williams in the 77K comes home in the third spot. And rounding out your top four will be the 11K of Kyle Klo.
as he makes his way past the flag stand and the grandstand. Beatrice Speedway, make some noise for your heat race winner in the 7A. That's Steve Atkin. You know, that makes the trip all that more uh, special, you know, travel all the way here from Cozad, Nebraska, and getting a heat race win on night one of the Spring Nationals. Got to feel pretty good about your decision to come here. Yeah, it's always great when you unload fast. That always gives a little bit of extra confidence as you roll into the night. I mean, getting a good start, a heat race win could be a making factor for your season. Heat race number two coming at you for your premier Chevrolet Buick GMC stock cars on the inside of row number one. Another local runner in the 19. That's Kyle Vanover to his outside in the 34 from Virginia, Nebraska. It's Mad Max Harder. Row number two is going to look like this on the inside out of Bellwood, Nebraska. The 14 of Tristan Great to the outside out of North Platte, Nebraska. The 11 of Joseph Cooper. And on the inside of row number three in the 82 machine is going to be Joey Richmond out of Wichita, Kansas. The 55 RX of George Ramey also out of Wichita to his outside. Shotgun on the field, a new stock car runner, the 13T. That's Tyler Jackson. Green flags out. We are down and gone, and we've already got a battle for the lead. Look at that as Mad Max Harder quickly to the point, and you've got a battle now between Grape and Vanover for P2, and soon to be a three-car battle as Vanover gets into the back of Mad Max Harder, but that's going to allow Grape to look to the inside, and you were... Grape is going to get him at the line just by a nose. So great battle there for the top spot as Grape sets to lead him down into turns three and four. We were talking at the end of the last heat race about how getting these heat race wins can really start your season off. Well, how about going out and leading laps this early in your stock car career? I believe this is Tristan Grape's first start in a stock car. I think he was doing a lot of hobby stock stuff last year. Definitely taking to it like a duck to water. I remember him being in the stock or uh, hobby stocks last year, and and so yes, great job for him right away here on night number one. Oh, I'm just glad my mind hasn't turned to total mush. As the battle heats up for the second spot, Vanover wants it on the low side. Harker just one lane above him. Good advantage for the 19 as they enter the back straightaway. But Mad Max, he's a charger. Watch him through three and four. He's going to try and get that low side advantage again. He's not going to have her done. Here comes the 19 of Vanover. He's got his, set, his sights set on Tristan Grave. Kyle Vanover, nicknamed Big Man on Campus. And I tell you what, he has been all of that here at the Beatrice Speedway as he picked up, I don't know, he won the track championship last year. I don't know how many of them he has won here, but uh, he's going to battle to the inside here off of turn number four. Going to try the high side down into turn number one. Meanwhile, Grape still shows the way. Vanover in second, Harder in third. Cooper rounding out your top four. Steve's got the rocking chair in hand. Two laps to go this time by past the, past the flag stand for the 14 of Tristan Grape. Trying to fight off that hard charging 19 of Kyle Vanover. Harder still continues to hang on to the third spot. Rounding out the top four currently is Joseph Cooper. Through three and four, they're gonna see the white flag this time by. Grape continues the advantage. Down the front straightaway, white flag in the air. One more trip around. One more trip around the Beatrice Speedway. Vanover's gonna try that low side. Here they go, off of turn number two and down the backstretch. Grape with a good run there. And he's gonna shut the door down here in turn number three. He looks to protect that low line and off of turn number four. Who's it gonna be? Picking up the heat race win. It's gonna be the 14 of Tristan Grape, followed by the 19 of Kyle Vanover in third. It's gonna be the 34 of Mad Max Harder and rounding out the top four, the 11 of Joseph Cooper. Great race there. Good bit of driving there for Tristan Grape, holding off uh, a veteran of the stock car division and Kyle Vanover. So uh, great bit of running there for Tristan Grape. How about it, race fans? Picking up the heat race win. The driver out of Bellwood, Nebraska, the 14 of Tristan Grape. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it. My first bad joke of the year. You know, they call Tristan Grape the race and raisin. But after that heat race, Ren, I think he smiled all the wrinkles out. I bet he did. Once again, we want to welcome each and every one of you tuned in live here on Flow Racing. Also, all you great fans in the stands, you look like you're 
you're starting to get comfortable here we're going to roll right into heat race number three and look who's on the pole the driver out of beatrice nebraska driving the 30 it's grabo jordan gerbowski two is outside out of idaho falls indiana it's the 12 of reed Payne. on the inside row number two it's going to be the 3t of nate thompson out of fremont nebraska and two is outside in the 31k it's nate decive out of o'neill nebraska inside of row number three it's the 13 of brandon beam not sure where he's from don't have it on my sheet and who is outside out of tama iowa the 19j of jay schmidt and rounding out your field out of Concordia, Kansas, it's going to be the 42 of Thane Beckman. Green flag is out. Heat race number three coming at you. Race fans off a of turn number four. And Grabowski quickly to the point and down to the low line here in turns one and two. He looks to lead us through. Oh, I thought we were going to be clean and green going through turns one and two. But the caution may come out. We've got one going around him. Oh, is he going to keep her going? I think he's going to keep it lit. We'll stay clean and green. Jordan Grabowski is going to lead lap number one. Thank you very much to the spinner. You might not win this heat race, but you're a winner in my book for keeping that one going. Jordan Grabowski holds the advantage over the second place battle. Going down here between Nate Thompson. Things getting a little bit physical through there between Nate Thompson and Jay Schmidt. That's what it's all about. The class two tough to tame your IMCA stock cars. So Grabowski still shows the way. We've got six more to decide this one. The battle right now on the speedway is still for that P2's position between Schmidt and Thompson. As Grabowski is going to click off another one here, and he's starting to pull away a little bit of that 19J of Jay Schmidt. Grabowski out there for a casual cruise leading this one in your premier Chevrolet Buick GMC stock car heat race number two. Keeps that 30 machine out ripping and rolling down the front stretch. Schmidt continues to hang on to the second spot. Thompson in third, rounding out your top four. Currently is Brandon Beam, Reed Payne in fifth. Sixth is Thane Beckman, seventh Nate DeSive, and eighth, everybody's favorite, Missing Data. So three more laps left in this one. Gerbowski still shows the way. You still got Schmidt in third, Thompson in, Schmidt in second, Thompson in third, and Beam in fourth. And we're gonna see sticks at the line this time. Two more times around the Beatrice Speedway as Gerbowski sets sail. He may even get a lap car in this one. It's possible as these laps continue to wind down for the 30, the hometown runner of Jordan Grabowski trying to set his sights and maybe put missing data one lap down. White flags out, one more trip around for the 30 machine and the rest of the field going on. Battle shaping back up for the second spot. Schmidt held on to it for a long time. Nate Thompson seems to have found something in the middle lane. He's only got about a half a lap to do it. As coming off of turn number four, Jordan Grabowski is going to pick up this heat race win. Let's see who's going to steal the second spot away. Jay Schmidt or Nate Thompson? Thompson with a money move at the line to get the second spot away from Schmidt. And rounding out the top four is Brandon Beam. What a run from Thompson off the high side of turn number four, keeping that momentum wound up and able to get, get Schmidt at the line. Excellent battle as that one wound down. You know it wasn't a battle. Jordan Grabowski set his sights out for a smooth, clear ride. I believe that's his first time in the stock car this year, not missing a beat with it. Beatrice Speedway, make some noise for your heat race winner, Jordan Grabowski. Well, our fourth and final heat race here for your IMCA stock cars. James, who do we got on the pole? Well, I tell you what, it's a familiar face that we've seen. Uh, he, he doesn't get down here as much as we'd like to see him, but on the inside of row number one out of Columbus, it's the 83 of Jeff Ware. To his outside, a guy we see every Friday night in the 76, that's Lance Borgman. On the inside of row number two, it's the 29 out of Odell, Nebraska. It's John Mayer to his outside. Out of Colby, Kansas, the 34H of Doug Holzmeister. I see why you did it this way. Your final row is gonna be the 1F. Bear with me. Don't send your family to beat me up. Troy Watchnicked. And to his outside, another guy making the move up into the stock cars in the three machine. It's Taylor Huss out of Fairbury. 
Much easier name to pronounce. Green flag is out. Your fourth and final heat race. Ware going to lead us down into turns one and two. Borgman right behind him. Huss going to try that high side there. Like you said, moved up from the hobby stock. He picked up the hobby stock track championship here last year. Now has sets his sight on a track championship in your IMCA stock car division. Sets in fourth right now. As Ware continues to lead a little bit more of the Taylor Huss story, I heard him over on the Front Stretch podcast. Now, growing up, I kind of saw Taylor throughout the grandstands with our uncles and dads racing. I grew up watching his dad, and just hearing that family lineage story has been excellent. Good to see him moving back up into the stock cars as Jeff Ware leads another one that time by. So Ware... Still shows the way. You've got Borgman setting in second. Holtz, Mister, sets in third, and Huss in fourth. Laps continuing to wind down in this one for Jeff Ware. Three in the books. Again, it's Ware, Borgman. Holmeister, Holzmeister, excuse me, and Taylor Huss rounding out your top four. John Meyer outside looking in in the 29 machine. As I say outside looking in, I happen to notice that all cars are going to transfer on to tonight's A main. So where's still your race leader? Boardman sets in second, Holzmister sets in third, Huss in fourth. Nothing has changed in your top four. As laps winding down in this one as we are at three to go and Ware with a comfortable lead over the 76 of Boardman. Rockin' chair flags out this time by two laps to go for your leader, the 83 of Jeff Ware. So Ware's gonna see the white flag this time off of turn number four. One more time, the bank, one more time around the bank, three eighths mile here at the Beatrice Speedway. Speaking of the banking, once again, big shout out to Mike Van Gendren and the Beatrice Speedway track prep crew changing the banking here, reshaping Beatrice Speedway and really giving us a racy facility as this time by off turn number four, Steve Porter's got the checkered flag in hand for the kid from Columbus, that's the 83 of... GMC. So many car brands represented here at the Beatrice Speedway. Right you are, and, and Ware just doing what he had to do. I mean, you start on the pole, and you might as well just go win it. I mean, so he got out to a good start there. But we're going to roll right in to the MHC Kenworth out of Lincoln, Nebraska, the new sponsor this year for your IMCA Hobby Socks. And let's get things started right away heat race number one on the pole out of Lincoln Nebraska the 33 of Fletcher Peterson to his outside back in a hobby it's going to be the 24R out of Beatrice Nebraska Dylan Richards starting on the inside of row number two it's going to be the 83 of Paxton Stubbs out of Ravana Nebraska into his outside another Fremont runner in the 2C that's the dirty dog Dave Carter hey row number three look at that one that's the battle between one and two at the Eagle Raceway uh, Gillen, he's uh, he he picked up the track championship. Wasserman, he come home in second. But on the inside of row number three, it's the 41 out of Fairbury, Nebraska. It's Adam Wasserman to his outside out of Sterling, Nebraska. The 46 of Ryan Gillen. And starting on the inside of row number four, it's going to be the R20 of Rob Durfee out of North Platte, Nebraska. And is outside in the 23D, it's Dawson Kubis out of Fairbury. And rounding out the field, the guy that actually picked up the award with a nice cardboard cutout of Ryan Gilland. Finishing out the field is going to be the 3N of Neil Pella. I don't know if you made it over to the Eagle Banquet, but it was great. Neil had a, like, 
cardboard cutout of Gillen's face on a popsicle stick that he would stand there to take pictures, read a speech through it and everything. I love it. Uh -oh. We got trouble off of the start as the 33 of oh. Peterson going around. Tough break for the 33 machine as he's always doing it for Dale. Oh, we got another one around over in turn number two. That's going to be the 83 machine. Tough break for Paxton Stubbs. Spins going on at both ends. We're going to have to re-rack, re-stack. So if you choose to, raise up your uh, raise up your cold beer, raise up your hot chocolate. Let's get them up, get them up, get them up. Take a drink. Thanks, Dan. Has Dan made it? I think he's right out there, but I've never been known for seeing. I tell you what, you and Dan and your commentating oh. up there in uh, Eagle Raceway, great. Absolutely great. Love listening to you guys. Well, I appreciate that, man. It's such a, th it's such, it's been such a thrill, really. I mean, working with everybody that I've gotten to work with up there, and then kind of starting to venture out and get down here. You and Brian Cook have been incredible to work with. We're kind of starting to get this banter thing going on back and forth, and getting these laps in. And you know what? As we continue to make improvements to the audio equipment, we're only going to get better and better. I promise. This is just first night jitters, and it's going to be full tilt like a Peterbilt from here on out. You're right, you are. And we're going to get back to action here in heat race number one. Green flag back out. Peterson and Richards. That's the pace. Richard's going to try to get the whole shot down into turn number one. Oh, Neil Pella hard into the wall, able to save it. But he did not want to turn. And you look at this, the 41 of Adam Wasserman already up to third, but he's got a battle there with the 46 of Gill. And actually, that is the battle for, yes, that's third now. As Wasserman now takes over third, and the battle right now is between the 33 of Fletcher and the 24R of Dylan Richards as they battle down the backstretch. Almost like an old school Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon battle. I always just call him the three, even though I know he's the 33. Fletcher Peterson and Dylan Richards going at it. Peterson down to the low side. Richards with the advantage in the 24R. He's going to lead that lap as Wasserman continues to hang on to the third spot. Battle between Carter and Gilland for the fourth position in your MHC Kenworth Hobby Stocks. Out in front continues to be the 24R, followed by Fletcher Peterson in 33, Adam Wasserman in the third spot, and the battle continues to rage on for fourth. Currently, it's in the 46 of Ryan Gilland. So Wasserman sets his sights down in turn number three as he looks to Tuck right to the bumper there of Peterson. Peterson protects that low line and down the front stretch they go. Richards, still your race leader as Wasserman goes to work now once again on Fletcher. I don't think it's going to be something that will present an issue, but if you watch as Richards rolls through the corners, you almost get a little plume of smoke off of that right rear possible small tire rub. I don't think it's going to be an issue with laps winding down, but we've got a battle shaping up for the second spot, rolling into one between Fletcher Peterson and Adam Wasserman. But don't look now, James, as you've got Ryan Gillen in that 46. He's going to look to throw his hat in the mix here as Wasserman looks to the outside over in turn number three. Good run there for Peterson as he's able to take away that position again. But Gillen now looks to the low side of the 41 of Wasserman. And we've got a two-lap shootout for second here at the Beatrice Speedway. Oh, I feel a good one coming on with this one. Fletcher Peterson currently hanging on to the spot. Wasserman tries to make the challenge to the outside. Gillen wants to... Be the one in the punch bowl down on the bottom side through three and four. Here we go, white flag is out from Steve Porter. Dylan Richards has the top spot sewn up for the time being. Fletcher Peterson on the bottom. Wasserman up to the high side. Gilliland trying to get in anywhere he can. Down the back straight away for the final time, Aaron. Right, you are off of turn number four. Oh, we got one high off of turn number three and four. But that's not going to bring out the caution as Dylan Richards is going to pick up the race win and that 24r in second is going to be the 33 of fletcher peterson 
I believe in thirds, the 41 of Adam Wasserman, and rounding out the top four is the 46 of Ryan Gillen, according to the score on my race pass. Unofficial results, of might course. I add. I just can't believe I didn't get my fantasy picks in before the night got going. Just got so excited. So Dylan Richards picking up the heat race win here in your MHC Kenworth IMCA Hobby Sox. We're going to roll right into heat race number two. And on the pole out of Onega, Kansas, it's going to be the 7M of Nick Ronnebaum to the outside. Out of Welcome, Minnesota, the 47P of Parker Anderson. Row number two on the inside, the driver out of Fairbury, Nebraska, in that brand new jet Hobby stock, that's the 69 of Brendan Stiggy. Two is outside out of Dorchester, Nebraska. It's the 12 of Michael Wade. Row number three on the inside out of Clarendale, Iowa. That's the 12G of Trey Gray, or Tyler Gray, I'm sorry. Two is outside out of Union, Nebraska. The 54 of James Turnsky. Row number four on the inside out of Sioux City, Iowa, the 22T of Tyler Smith. Two is outside out of Grand Island, Nebraska, the 24T of Talon Lambertus. Lambertus rounding out your field. We're still yellow here in heat race number two. Ronabom, a quick one there on the pole. Michael Wade has moved up to his outside as Anderson may be opt into the back is the 47P. I'm not seeing the 47P out there. Sorry, I left you kind of high and dry on that one. Our flow broadcaster was looking for some hand warmers and it took me a while to dig them out. But I tell you what, when I turned back around to get back in this booth, I saw a lovely sight. We've still got fans rolling in the front gate. As I've said earlier, only the realest race fans here in attendance at Beatrice Speedway tonight. Thank you to each and every one of you for spending your hard-earned dollar and freezing to that bench here with us. Green flag is out. He raced number two, and Ronabon quickly to the point. Here comes Stiggy on the inside of Wade. Brendan Stiggy in that sharp look at 69. He sets in second. Good run there. As you've got Gray looks to the inside of Wade now over in turns three and four. Ronabom looks to lead lap number one. Stiggy sets in second, but Gray in that 12G now in third. Wade's gonna have a battle down the back straight away as well for the fourth spot. As Ronabom continues to lead over Brendan Stiggy off turn number four, Stiggy closing the gap on your leader. Third place runner still going to be Gray with fourth being the 22T of Tyler Smith. Push Michael Wade back to fifth. So Ronabom leads us down the backstretch into turns three and four. Stiggy sets in second, but now he's got a little bit of a battle possibly shaping up there as the 12G of Tyler Gray closing the gap there. And how about that 22T of Tyler Smith made some quick work out of Michael Wade in that 12 machine. Michael Wade, a feature winner here at Beatrice Speedway last year, as are your current top two runners. Ronabom clicking it into cruise control, holding on to that top spot, Stiggy in second with Gray trying to close in from the third position. The 69 looking high, wide, and handsome, comfortable in his spot on the low line. The Hobby Stock guys here in the MHC IMCA Hobby Stocks enjoying the low side as the track continues to widen out. The 7 of Nick Ronabom, that car looking very good out here at night number one as he protects that low line. Brendan Stiggy in that brand new Jet Hobby. He had to get a new one there as uh, we all remember him hitting the front stretch wall last year hard. hard and uh, for that team. 
He, he did fix that car. However, you know, sometimes you just need a new car. But uh, Ronabom looking for the white flag this time off a of turn number four. Yes, sir. Nick Ronabom going to pick up the white flag from Steve Porter, new head flagman here at Beatrice Speedway. Stiggy hangs on to the second spot. Gray in third, but he's going to be challenged by the 22T of Tyler Smith. Keep your eye on that battle there. Back in the pack, down the back straightaway. The 22T is going to try to take it to the inside of the 12 machine of Gray is off turn number four. Nick Ronabom picks up the heat race win. Brandon Stiggy brings it home in the second spot. Who's going to seal the deal for third? Give that spot. Oh, to Tyler Smith in the 22 T. It was. Um, oh, yep, that's what it was. Little, little bit of a transponder, transponder hiccup on that one. Anyways, Beatrice Speedway makes some noise as he makes his way underneath the flag stand for your heat race winner, the seven N. That's Nick Ronabom. MHC Kenworth out of Lincoln, Nebraska, bringing you your hobby stock division for the 2024 season as heat race number three rolls out onto the famed Beatrice Speedway. On the inside of row number one, it's going to be the 13M of Justin Meyer out of Carter Lake, Iowa. It is outside in the 77. It's Lightning McQueen. No, I'm just kidding. It's Cody Williams out of Minneapolis, Kansas in the 77. Row number two on the inside out of Hinton, Iowa, the 33X of Carter Davis. Who is outside out of Beatrice, the double zero J of John Martinez. Starting on the inside of row number three, it's going to be the 21, or excuse me, 31 of Dylan Bell out of St. John, Kansas. To his outside in the 58B, it's Brent Beaumont from Concordia. Row number four is going to look like this, the 6R of Roy Armstrong out of Beatrice, Nebraska. Two is outside the 12T of Tanner Jones out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Green flag is out. Your final heat race here for your IMCA hobby stocks. And quickly to the point, it's Meatloaf. Cody Williams in that 77 Lightning McQueen. Good run there. He picked up a big, big championship down in Arizona here a while back. Uh, great run there. That's Cody Williams always fast in that Lightning McQueen. Cut chow to the point. To the point for the 77, the battle continues to rage on back there behind him at the Beatrice Speedway. Down the back straightaway and into turn number three. Williams will lead this one as well. He's followed by the 33X of Carter Davis. John Martinez holds down the third spot. He's going to be challenged on the low side by Rock and Roy Armstrong in that familiar 6R. How about the Wiley veteran starting in the back row there and quickly up to third. We've got one going around over in turns one and two. Able to keep the green flag out. Hats off to that guy. And Meatloaf still shows the way. Thank you very much, Mr. Beaumont, for helping us keep it clean and green as Cody Williams continues to hold down the point in this one. Carter Davis continuing to hang on to second. Roy Armstrong put that 6R to the third position. John Martinez rounding out your top four. So Cody Williams comfortable out in front. Meanwhile, Carter Davis sets in second. I think we're going to have a battle for fourth as Martinez now starts to fall back into the clutches there of the 31 of Dylan Bell. Martinez with a good rebound that time around. He's going to solidify his fourth spot for the time being. Hang on to her, John, as Cody Williams continues to lead this one down the back straightaway into three and four for the final time. Or not the final time. Two laps to go on this one. I got to bring some Windex tomorrow. As Cody Williams still your race leader, and he's going to set his sights down on the white flag when he comes off a of turn number four, but a good run there for Carter Davis as he closed the gaps a little bit there. Williams with a good run off a corner exit, and he looks for one more time around the Beatrice Speedway to pick up the heat race win. Down the backstretch he goes. Davis gives chase.
Steve Porter's got the checkered flag in hand as off a of turn number four this time by, picking up the MHC Kenworth heat race win in the 77. It's going to be Cody Williams. Bringing it home in the second spot will be the 33X of Carter Davis. Roy Armstrong in the 6R brings it home in third and rounding out your top four. It'll be the double OJ of John Martinez. Beatrice Speedway makes some noise for your heat race winner as he passes by the grandstands. Once again, that's the 77 of Cody Williams. Another big shout out to MHC Kenworth Parts, Truck Sales, and Service. You can find MHC Kenworth at 201 Southwest 27th Street, Lincoln, Nebraska, or reach them by phone if I don't accidentally change the picture at 402-474-9758. Excuse me, 50. Big thanks to MHC Kenworth for jumping on with us for the 2024 season. Right you are, James. We're going to roll into the final class here of night number one of the Spring National. It is the Twin Rivers IMCA Modified and on the pole. It's the driver out of Denton, Nebraska. It's the 18 of Terry Richard Jr. To his outside, out of Boone, Iowa, it's going to be the 11 of Isaac Melcote. Starting on the inside of row number two, it's going to be the 16 machine of Austin Swoboda out of David City, Nebraska, and to his outside in the 10 from Clear Lake, Iowa, it's Jeremy Mills. Rolling off on the inside of row number three, it's the 10G of Don Guest out of Burlington, Colorado, to the outside out of Melbourne, Iowa, it's going to be the one of Justin Zeitner. Inside row number three is going to be the 71C of Troy Cordez out of Dunkerton, Iowa, to his outside in the 735, it's... It's an interesting name to pronounce. It's Tim Echevarria out of Junction City, Kansas, and rounding out the field, a rookie competitor in the Modifieds. It's the 2T, Cameron Thompson out of Omaha. Women for Racing 50-50 going around the grandstand right now. Make some noise, and these ladies brave in the cold. The, what the women for racing do here at the Beatrice Speedway is second to none. Hats off to them, ladies, and get yourself a 50-50 ticket and we'll have the winner coming up here. So green flag is out. Heat race number one, Riches Jr. and Malcote leading us down here in turns one and two. Malcote with the early advantage off a of turn number two and down the back stretch. Good battle here for heat race number one, your Twin River IMCA Modifieds. Aaron, I tell you what, I've already had my cheeseburger and cheese fries, but I got a feeling we're about ready to go to Slider City with these Twin Rivers IMCA Modifieds. Leading the field down the front straightaway. Isaac Malakote in that 11 machine, a rookie in the Modifieds last year, wasting no time in the second spot, currently being held down by Justin Zeitner in third. Jeremy Mills continues to hold it down, and Terry Richards rounding out your top four for the time being. As the field begins to spread out a bit, no, I take that back. Here comes the 71C of Troy Cordez trying to make his way around the tool man, Terry Richards. He'll get the job done through one and two as your leader continues to be the 11 of Isaac Malakote. My bad on the pronunciation, pronunciation there of of the race leader, it is Malakote. I don't know what I was looking at. I think I need bifocals. <laughs> well, as long as you don't need a bi-optic, you're going to be all right. Malakote still shows the race lead. Zeitner sets in second, Mills in third. Cordis rounding out your top four, but you've got a battle down for P3 down the back stretches. Cordis going to look to the inside, unable to get the run he needed, and Mills going to shut the door down here in three and four, but back to it again as they come past the flag stand, and you've got a new third place runner, and that is the 71C of Troy Cordis. I thought for a moment he was going to lose it there towards the end of the front straightaway, but he managed to solidify that spot with a low side charge through one and two. Hangs on to it for the time being as Malakote continues to lead. 
over Zeitner, Cordez, and Mills rounding out your top four. Laps really winding down in this one, one to go. Trouble there for Cordez as he got a little loose in turns one and two. That's gonna allow the 10 of Mills to close the gap and now they're back to side by side, but picking up the feature or the heat race win, that's gonna be the 11 of Isaac Malakote. Coming home in second, that's the one of Justin Zeitner in third. What a battle there, but give it to the 71C of Troy C Cordez. And rounding out the top four, it's gonna be the 10 of Jeremy Mills. So great battle there, heat race number one, your Twin River IMCA Modifieds. Great run for Isaac Malakote in that one. That heat race will go in the books. Make some noise for your heat race winner if you haven't already. Getting ready to roll heat race number two out for your Twin Rivers Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram IMCA modified heat races. Starting on the inside of row number one, the hometown hero in the 96J, it's Johnny the Jet Sadoff. To his outside, making his Beatrice Speedway return from Harcourt, Iowa in the 4TW, it's Tim Ward. Rolling off on the inside of row number two out of Beatrice, Nebraska. It's the junior jet, the 96 of Jackson Sadoff. To his outside out of Seneca, Kansas, the 75 of Kyle Oberding. Starting on the inside of row number three, it's going to be the 98 machine of Jacob Snyder from Dunkerton, Iowa. To his outside in the 3T out of Fremont, it's Nate Thompson, another one of those guys pulling double duty. Row number four on the inside is the 7M out of Bar Nun, Wyoming. It's Daniel Miller to his outside out of Eldora, Iowa. It's the 19S of Chase Wilner. Green flag is out. Heat race number two. I think we're going to have a heck of a race on our hands as the Jet takes the early advantage through turn number one. But Tim Ward's going to battle back hard and heavy to the outside, trying to make his way around the 96J. He's got the advantage into turn number three. Can he hang on to it off turn number four? Who's going to lead lap number one? Give it to the 4T dub. Johnny continues to hang on to the second spot. Jackson in third. Kyle Oberding rounding out your top four. He's going to try and make some moves there. Nothing doing. Jackson Sadoff's going to hang on to the third spot as Ward continues to lead over Johnny the Jet. Thompson's going to try and make an outside charge for the fifth spot. Not going to happen that time by. Down the back straight away into turn three. Tim Ward continues the advantage. Johnny the Jet kind of trying to close in on that 4TW. Still about a five car length advantage for the Honeycutt Iowa runner. Jackson Sadoff's now going to try and battle the inside of the old man. The junior Jet down to the low side. The old man up to the top side. Here comes the junior Jet. Low side momentum move for the 96 machine. Can he put the old man in the dust? Yes, he will. Put Johnny the Jet back to third. Jackson sat off into second and continuing to lead is Tim Ward. Jackson sat off doing some late model driving last year. So, uh, you know, it's good to see him back here in a modified, you know, the class that he, I think is more comfortable in or whatever, but no doubt a great talent right there as he's able to put his dad back a spot, but not yet. Look at the jet gonna battle down the back stretch they go. Good battle there for P2 on the speedway. Meanwhile, Oberding rounding out the top four. Dad's trying to show the kid that the midline to high line can still get the job done here at Beatrice Speedway. Once again, Tim Ward continues to lead the field. Jackson sat off in second. Dad's gonna try and make a challenge to the low side this time. Jackson takes the line away. Johnny's gonna have to try and find another way around as Tim Ward continues to lead this one. Steve Porter's got the white flag in the air. One more lap to go in this Twin Rivers Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram modified heat race. Tim Ward comfortable into three and off a of turn number four in that four TW. He's gonna pick up the heat race win with your IMCA modified. Coming home in second, it's gonna be the junior jet of Jackson Sadoff in third, the jet Johnny Sadoff and rounding out the top Four is going to be the 75 of Kyle Oberding. So how about it, race fans? Picking up the heat race win. It's going to be the 4TW of Tim Ward.
Well, James, we've uh, come to our final heat race of night one here at the Spring Nationals here at the Beatrice Speedway. I'm going to give you the honors to start us off here. All right, I suppose I can do that, and I, the honor is definitely all mine to be standing here working alongside of you. Starting on the inside of row number one, it's going to be the 20 of Brandon Clo out of Wallace, Nebraska, to his outside in the 70. It's Brad Morris from Junction City, Kansas. Row number two on the inside out of Abilene, Kansas, the 26X of Shane Meeks. To his outside out of Beatrice, it's the 30, Grabo Jordan Garbowski. Starting on the inside of row number three, a guy from Hickman, Nebraska, it's the 4B, Brandon Verbeek. And to his outside, the Duke from Dorchester. It's the 5S of Bob Zobeck. Row number four on the inside out of Lincoln, Nebraska. C81 of Mike Densberger. To his outside, the 10T out of Burlington, Colorado. is Trevor Gist. Have you ever seen Mike Densberger do a cartwheel? I have not. I, I Truthfully, I haven't either. But if you ask Dan Taylor, apparently Mike Densberger is the cartwheel king. I might have to venture down to the old 81 pits tonight and just see if see if he's willing to put on a, a demonstration. I don't think I should try a cartwheel. I don't want to try a cartwheel. If you see me doing a cartwheel, it's probably down the stairs and unintentional. Head flagman Steve Porter saying one more trip around. They'll get this one underway. Had one waiting for the crossover. As we take this lap, I'll run you through once again through our field. Eh, you know what? No, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So your front row is going to be Chloe and Morris, second row Meeks and Grabowski, third row Verbeek and Zobeck. Rounding out the field will be Densberger and Geist. Wheel and caution lights are out in all four corners. We're going to get ready to cut the juice and turn the thing loose. Here we go for your final heat race of the evening in your Twin Rivers IMCA Modifieds. Here we go. Down into turn number one. We're going to send these dogs a thunder and Clo has the spot for the time being. Big three wide battle going on behind him. And here come those wheel and caution lights. Steve Porter not liking something about that start. So we'll re-rack, re-stack, and get right back. Did we ever figure out who the 17 was? Dan Wagner. Dan Wagner got a little uh, loose over here in turn number one. And that's going to bring out the caution light. But... What does that mean, James? Oh, oh, and Dan's actually here now. So uh, Beatrice Speedway, raise him up high. Let's drink him dry. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Let's have a drink. They're going to get used to it. Eventually. Well, Eventually. I, I know as the weather starts to get warmer, I mean, yep. I've left this place in the passenger seat more times than once. I know Beatrice Speedway knows how to party. All right, green flags back out. Here we go with Klo leading the field into turn number one. Grabowski's going to try and mount a challenge. Klo holds the spot for the time being. Grabowski's going to be challenged to the outside by the 70 of Brad Morris. So Grabowski's going to look to the inside of the 70 of Morris off a of turn number four. Klo's going to lead lap number one, but Grabowski now in that sharp orange and black JGR. Sets in second and sets his sight now on the race lead of Clow. So it is Clow, Grabowski, Morris, Meeks, Zobeck, your top five in this one. Look out for Bullet Bob. I know he wants to try and make some moves through here. A little slip of the grip for the 5B. Back towards the front of the field. Klo continues to hold off Grabowski, this time past the flag stand. Grabowski trying to shorten the gap. Oh, got one around over in turn four. Aaron, he's right behind the pole. Who we got on the spin cycle? I believe that's the 5S of Bob Zobak going around over there. And unfortunately, unable to get that thing fired off, and he's going to bring out the wheel and caution light. 
So that's going to put the 5S of Zobek back us to the back of the field. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize to everyone, but I've got a new nickname for a driver. We're going to go with Waiting for Data, Dan Wagner, in the 17, rounding out the field. Dan Wagner in that number 17. All right, wheeling caution lights out in all four corners. We're going to wind this one down three laps of eight, three laps down for this eight lap final modified heat race. Slow through three. They're going to stand on the loud pedal off a of turn number four. Brandon Cloak and he hang on for the remaining five laps in this one with a hard charging 30 30 of Jordan Grabowski. Waiting in the wings in the second spot. Close battle down the back straightaway. Grabowski's going to pull to the low side, keep Clo up to the middle. And you've got a battle for the race lead through three and four. Past the flag stand, give the spot to Jordan Grabowski. Put Clo to the second spot. Shane Meeks and Trevor Geist round out your top four. Excuse me. Grabowski's hard to keep at bay and Definitely did not want to see that caution as Clow had a race lead. But Gerbowski there on the restart takes advantage and he is now your new race leader. Zobak's ripping the lip back here as he had to tag the tail of the field, but he is trying to make that high side work as he works down the back stretch, trying to pick up a few more spots that he lost. We got one going around. Oh, hard into the side. The 81 of Densberger, nowhere to go. Tough break. Three cars involved in that one. The 81 of Densberger was able to keep I, it moving. Some I think it was damage the, to that one. I think it was the 26 X of Meeks going around and unfortunately no place for anybody to go. Tough break for those guys after such a smooth night of heat racing. Not a lot of torn up stuff in these heat races. Unfortunately, that one's probably going to win the award. Tough break for Bob Zobeck. He's going to take that 5S machine pit side and retire from this heat race. We'll see him later on come feature time. And everybody is going to be able to drive away from this one. So when we go back to green flag racing, we're going to have two laps left in this one. Jordan Grabowski continues to lead in the 30 machine. Brandon Klo in the 20 in second. Third will go to the 10T of Trevor Geist. Fourth to the 17 of Dan Wagner. And Steve Porter puts the green flag back in the air. We are back to racing action. Two laps shootout for the 30 of Jordan Grabowski and the herd hauling the mail behind him. So Grabowski down the back stretch into turn number three, looking for the white flag this time on a turn number four. Close sets in second. Meanwhile, the 70 of Morris rounding out the top three. So Grabowski into three, looking for the checkered flag this time on a turn number four. Put your hands together, Beatrice, for the rate feature winner. Uh, the heat race winner, I'm sorry, it is the 30 of Grabowski. Followed by the 20 of Brandon Clow and the 70 of Brad Morris. And I believe the top 
four is going to be the 10 T of Trevor. Guest, guys, do you know? To take Geist, the truth, I believe it's Geist. Sure, but I'm sure when I walk through the pits later on tonight, I'll get told how I said it wrong. It always happens. Well, that's going to conclude heat race activity. Good, quick run. Good, quick, no more than 10 minute intermission. Is that what I'm being told? I believe they said 10 minutes. So uh, great time now to get down there and uh, do whatever you got to do. Get some of those famous Beatrice gizzards oh, or whatever, uh, whatever you uh, tickles your fancy, they say. I'm, I might have to go for the second boat of cheese fries. <laughs> 